there's a film called Begon Be Care, uh, which is uh, still today uh, the best visualization, abstract visualization of music, in my opinion. A piano tuned by Oscar Peterson. And uh, it's just perfect. As a sensitive artist, spending hours and hours and hours bent over a strip of film on, on his uh, table, he could uh, paint and scratch and print and do all kinds of random techniques to create imagery that when put through the, the printer or the, uh, the film projector. I think my favorite uh, film by Norman uh, it's, a, it's a love story. It's just a choreographed ballet. It's a part of the boy-girl story. They fall in love. That's it. And it's beautifully done. And it's another experimental film. He was experimenting with uh, the optical printer, taking film and printing it many, many times in the same frame, and developing this technique, which was used many times afterwards, of uh, as it were, leaving a trail behind the action. And with that idea, that technique, that concept, using it to artfully not only accentuate, but to, uh, to really justify the choreography of, of this piece of ballet so that it had a reason to be in that form and that the whole thing together in the story and, and the form in which it's made makes a coherent whole that feels right. Blink and blank. Oh, blink and blank. There was, a, there was a moment in Ratatouille where Remy was visualizing the... Yeah. Uh, Wasn't it crap by comparison to that? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Uh, no. I thought, I, when I saw it, I thought it was yeah. a beautiful representation of music and then yeah. taste. And but of course, that's where it came from. <laughs> when Brad decided to do that in the film, um, to, to, to ex make explicit a feeling visually, it was drawing from work like that, McLaren's work. Uh, straight line, um, very straightforward uh, re interpretation. You've seen, and you will see, many, many different versions of this. It's sort of an obvious thing to do, in a way, right? To just take movement and color and try and follow an idea uh, with it, with an abstraction. Abstract art is difficult to do it really, really well. Okay, so now we have the camera in the hands of the audience, which doesn't make any sense, and we've got to resolve that contradiction, because what we've got then, next, is a story, because that's what a film is. A film is a story plus film language. You use the film language to tell the story, and you've got shots, cuts, you've got camera moves, you've got angles that you're, that you're using, you've got editing. You've got the basic things that have, that have happened over the last 100 years or so since, well, more than 100 years, since the Lumiere brothers, since Melier, since all the early filmmakers, and we've learned to understand film language, and we take it for granted that that's the way we string together in our minds a series of images and they make sense. And you've got the world through the tiny screen. And that's the big breakthrough. How can you use that and now in the world that's all around you, the virtual world, paint the pictures to tell a story. And trying to make sense of all that is what we've been trying to do. New things can happen. It's a piece of software. So you can actually imagine if there's a reason for it in the story, new characters appearing and extra details showing up and things changing over time. All kinds of other things are possible now that this is an interactive, game-like show that's still a story. How do we tell a story? Now you've seen one technique, which is to have these waiting places where the actors will wait for you until you're paying attention. So you have to some extent control over the pacing of the show. So it's interactive. Every Pixar movie, every major feature film, half the time is spent on developing and refining the story again and again and again. Because story and character are two sides of the same coin. How was that initial meeting though? Like, how did you structure it out to develop a story or even the start? Well, we were all thinking about yeah. ideas. I remember Doug, um, who did the layout and really the guts of the story of Doug Sweetman's. Um, of, of Windy Day. It, it's a selfless thing when it's done best, but what Doug started doing was just, uh, yeah, I don't know what the story's gonna be, but I know it's gotta be like this. 
a story like this. Because it's interactive, you're inside. If, if you're just sitting there looking at something at a table or something, it's not no point doing it this way, right? Whatever the story ends up being, it has to have a reason for moving around and actually waving the device in the air. So I don't know what it's going to be, but it's going to be like this. And it's that, that understanding that led to choices. it's quite mind-blowing because I never knew how far that technology has developed so like wait what is this Google spotlight whoa this is pretty cool and once you actually grab it on your hand and like rotate it around I'm like wait what I didn't know there were so many possibilities I'm talking about virtual reality and it's like at the forefront of technology and I'm just starting to get interested in working in games and learning about 3D, just like seeing his presentation just shows where all these doors can go to and I guess now I'm interested in working in virtual reality. Well, I think it's really cool. There's just like a lot of things that are going on with virtual reality. No one really knows where it's going, but the presentation is giving us a lot of good ideas about you know, what you could do with virtual reality as gen in general. And I think it's really cool that movies are starting to become a little bit more interactive. Today we're just we're going to do uh, we're going to do a kind of weird improvisation. We're going to make it up as we go along. This hasn't been done before. You are pioneers. <laughs> no, really seriously. Actually, seriously, you're on the. Not only are you cutting paper with scissors, you are on the cutting edge. Of... <laughs> <laughs> uh, of, of thinking about immersive, interactive filmmaking. What we're going to do? We're going to do some. Uh, we're going to split you up into groups, and we're going to imagine that that this is your phone or your VR device and you have your virtual, actual reality now. It's in real time, no technical problems here. So we want to split you up into groups, and some can stay here, some go to various other rooms, you can do it in the corridor, and the idea is to think about and make up a little event, or it doesn't even have to be a story. We try and do something where a group of you, three or four or five of you, can present a show of some kind, to one person who's looking at you like this. viewers, which is basically cardboard, a little cardboard cutout that fits around your face to help you see reality. When we got here, uh, he told us we were doing improv exercises where we would plan a story for our reality viewer who would be seeing much like how a, a person with their phone would be seeing. We sat around and figured out what worked and what didn't, and we learned a whole lot about what it's like guiding the eye when the person behind the camera has complete control over what they want to see. It was exciting. 